uh, title for the webinar today is uh, applying load groups instead okay uh, before we start uh, let's do some housekeeping items uh, Bentley has a uh, lot of uh, tools that can help you to uh, work from home in this uh, climate. So please follow the link on the screen uh, to get to know uh, the tools available for working from home. Okay. Uh, some of you may be aware of our uh, year in infrastructure awards. Every year, this competition is conducted by Bentley. So please uh, try to nominate some of your projects. Uh, the deadline is May 1st, 2020. This year, this uh, finalist will be invited to Vancouver in Canada. It's the best time for you to showcase your projects using Bentley products, and it's also a good advertisement for you and your company. <clears throat> On the bottom of your screen are multiple application widgets that you can use. Uh, the widgets, all the widgets are resizable and movable, so feel free to move them around to get the most out of your desktop space. You can expand your slide area or maximize it to full screen by clicking to the arrows in the top right corner. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can submit them through the Q&A widget. We will try to answer this during the webcast, but if a full answer is needed or we run out of time, it will be answered later via email. Okay. But please know that uh, uh, we do capture all the questions. Okay. Additional help materials are available in the resource list. We encourage you to download any resources or bookmark any links that you may find useful. For the best viewing experience, we recommend using a wired internet connection and closing any programs or browser sessions running in background that could cause issues. Webinars are bandwidth intensive, so closing any un unnecessary browsing browser tabs will help conserve your bandwidth. The webcast is being streamed through your computer, so there is no dial-in number. For the best audio quality, please make sure your computer speakers or headset are turned on and the volume is up so you can hear the presenters. Some networks causes slides to advance more sl slowly than others, so logging off your VPN is recommended. If your slides are behind, pushing F5 on your keyboard will refresh the page. You can find additional answers to some common technical issues located in the help widget at the bottom of your screen. An on-demand version of the webcast will be available approximately one day after the webcast and can be accessed using the same audience links that was sent to you earlier. On24 offers eligibility to all the participants to get the certificate for this webinar. To download the certificate, click on widget certificate icon at the bottom of your screen. Participants will also receive a follow-up email. Thank you for attending with a link where they can download the certificate. If you're watching with a group of colleagues, to add them as attendees, click on the certificate widget. Then on group viewing form, complete the fields for each attend additional participants attendees, hit save and add them. You can also send us the list of additional participants and we will add and provide the certificate. Okay, with that, uh, let's get started with our today's uh, special interest group, that special interest group. We shortly call it as S. IG. We plan to do it every alternate months in Southeast Asia, benefiting the users in uh, Southeast Asia and uh, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, this uh, SIG meetings, virtual workshops, are aimed to address the users to utilize our programs, new features, or even old features which are uh, rarely used uh, to get uh, to maximize the usage of a program and to do more accurate analysis and more effective in their uh, uh, projects. So before I get started with this uh, load groups, 
I know some of you uh, may be puzzled because uh, this is a new name you may be hearing, uh, load groups. So I want to know uh, uh, that how many of you are using the StatPro Connect Edition? So please answer this poll. <clears throat> say yes or no. If you are using StatPro Connect Edition, say yes. If you don't use StatPro Connect Edition, say no. Okay. I know that uh, nearly 30% uh, of uh, our users here in Southeast Asia uh, are still using the old StatPro V8i version. So I want to I want to capture that and see how the progress of uh, this upgrade from VHI to Connect Edition. That's why these polls are helping us to uh, know the uh, situation or know the climate. So let me hold for another five seconds for this slide. OK, so hope all of you answered this uh, poll. Start Pro Connect Edition. Yes, some question. Okay, so I'll move on to the next slide. Slightly different poll. Are you using Start Pro Connect Edition version 22 update 3? Okay. This is very important poll because version 22 update 3, there is some major improvement in the Start Pro Connect Edition. Some of you may be aware of that uh, uh, StatPro Connect Edition first version was released almost nearly two and a half years back. Okay, whereas Update 3 was just released uh, two months back. Uh, one of the major improvements in this uh, latest version, Connect Edition version 22 Update 3, is that the RCDC program is available even for the StatPro basic users. Prior to this version, the StatPro advanced users, advanced License users only are allowed to access this RCDC program. But now, even the basic users are allowed to use the limited version of uh, this advanced concrete designer, otherwise called as RCDC. The beam, column, and wall design is available, but the detailing drawings cannot be saved, but can be viewed only on the screen. The bar bending schedules and all are not available in this limited version. Okay, So that is a major implement in this uh, version 22 update 3. That's why we want to capture how many of you have updated to the latest version of StatPro Connect Edition version 22 update 3. If you're not done so, you can update it through your connection client on your taskbar, or you can manually download it from our uh, Bentley download site, software download sites, or request your IT team to download it and install it for you. So with that, I'll move on to the next uh, slide. Have you used the load groups, otherwise called as reference loads in StatPro? I'll explain about the name change of uh, the difference, uh, I mean, the, why this name change from reference loads to load groups um, in the next uh, few slides. Okay. So how many of you use this reference loads in StatPro analytical modeler? Okay, or the load groups in the StatPro physical modeler? Say yes or no. Okay. If you either use this reference loads or load groups in StatPro, say yes. If you don't use this reference load, say no. I know uh, my experience in interaction with our StatPro users in South CPAC, Southeast Asia Pacific, is that still 90% of the users have not used started using this uh, reference loads command. Very, very useful feature. Yeah. And that is the whole purpose of this session today to the important feature, load groups, otherwise called as reference loads. Hope you have answered this. This will help me to understand uh, and um, uh, to create new topics in the future. So please do answer this post. Thank you. OK, I'll move on to the next slide. OK, the agenda for uh, today's uh, uh, approximately one hour uh, workshop is that uh, first of all, let's learn what is a load group, the applications of load groups, real and unreal loads. And then we look at the difference between load combinations, repeat loads, and load groups. I'm sure almost all of you attendees here are using load combinations. Okay, And at least 50% of you, I'm sure, uh, will have started using repeat loads. And at least... Um, 25% of you, I'm, uh, I'm sure that I started using reference loads or load groups. 
Okay, and my aim of this uh, session today is that how the 100% of you attending today should start or at least should understand the importance of load groups and uh, reference loads. Okay. And we'll learn some four examples, both uh, underground, on the ground, linear, non-linear, seismic analysis. Okay. All four examples, uh, we'll see the difference between uh, using these two, three ways of combining the loads. Okay. Load combinations, repeat loads, and load groups. Then we'll summarize, and then we'll open up for a question and answer session. So first of all, what is a load group in StatPro? Okay. As the name itself explains to you, load groups or groups of load okay, are used to create real and unreal loads that need not be analyzed. Okay. They can be called in the primary loads to form real load cases, which only should be analyzed. I know some of you may get confused in this first statement itself. What do I mean by real and unreal loads? I'll explain in the subsequent slides. Okay. And uh, note that these load groups need not have to be analyzed, whereas traditionally, many of our retail engineers create primary load cases, load number one, dead load, load number two, live load, load number three, wind load, okay. load number four, five, uh, wind load in different directions, and seismic loads in different directions. And we spend time in analyzing the unreal load, such as wind load acting alone, live load acting alone, which is never going to act in the site. Am I correct? Live load will always act together with dead load. Wind load will always act together with dead load. So what is the point in analyzing wind load acting alone, live load acting alone? Okay, That's what I mean. Real and unreal loads and uh, load groups are not analyzed by its own okay until they are called in the primary load case to form real which only should be analyzed okay for analyzing only for real load cases we can reduce the analysis time and get accurate results by analyzing only real load cases okay we can also avoid getting the instability warning messages for some models which are analyzed for unreal load cases. So many of you here, I'm sure, uh, use StatPro for analyzing steel structures. Uh, some of you use it for analyzing underground tunnel structures, culverts, which has compression-only springs, steel structures having tension-only members, cable members, so and so. So when you analyze these kind of structures with unreal load cases like wind load acting alone, occupancy load, lateral load, without the gravity loads, the dead load, these loads are unreal loads. So you end up getting stability warning messages. Okay. So load group is the new name given for reference load in the physical modeler. Otherwise, both are same. Okay. Since StatPro is evolving, particularly the connect edition with the physical modeler, we started giving more uh, user-friendly names. For example, the old reference load uh, command used in the analytical modeler, uh, many users uh, still don't use it properly. Uh, don't use it. I would, as I expect, uh, 25% of our stat pro users in this region use reference load, but remaining 75% of them use, use load combinations and uh, repeat loads. Okay. That's why a new name called load Load group is a more meaningful name. It's, it's useful for grouping the loads, okay? uh, but different from load combination command. Okay, So this is a new name given for reference load in the physical modeler. In the physical modeler, the name is called load group. In the analytical model, it's called reference load. Okay, So load groups used in the physical modeler are exported as reference loads in the analytical modeler. Applications of load groups structures with tension, compression, cable, inactive members. Many of the steel structures definitely have wind bracings, isn't it, which are declared as tension members, isn't it? So just with tension, compression, cable, inactive members, structures with tension, compression spring, like underground tunnels, underground culverts, we use tension, compression spring. On the ground uh, tanks, water tanks, we use compression-only springs. Multilinear springs, when the underground structures or on the ground structures are supported by piles which have a different capacity for compression and tension 
then we use multilinear springs. So load groups are useful in that situation also. Mass modeling for static seismic response spectra and time history analysis. So those who do seismic analysis using StatPro by using the static seismic method or response spectrum method or tone motion, the load groups are useful for creating the mass modeling in one single load case. Okay. Compared to previously uh, creating the mass model separately for each and every uh, seismic load. Okay. And when you do P delta analysis, nowadays many of our design codes are request to uh, to capture this uh, small and large P delta effects. So when you do P delta analysis, it's very important that you apply your lateral load and gravity load, such as dead load, live load, and and uh, lateral load such as wind load, to act simultaneously. Many of us apply the load separately, load number one, dead load, load number two, live load, load number three, wind load, and we analyze them separately. P delta effect won't be captured if you analyze like that by using load combinations. You have to apply them simultaneously by using either repeat load or this load groups or reference loads okay, to capture the P delta effect correctly. Also, geometric nonlinear analysis, buckling analysis, both iterative and non-iterative Eigen buckling analysis. The iterative buckling analysis, uh, which is available in the StatPro Basic, and uh, the Eigen buckling analysis, which is available in the StatPro Advanced, both will get benefited of this uh, uh, load group reference load feature. Also, the basic and advanced cable analysis uh, gets benefited from these load groups. Okay, so these are the applications of load groups. Okay. If your structure is a simple uh, building structure without any of these, all these cases, then load groups may, may or be useful for you. Okay, just a normal way of uh, doing primary load cases, applying primary load cases and load combinations will be good enough. But if any one of these situation arises, then the traditional way of uh, doing your analysis is not good anymore. You have to do combine the loads with reference loads and repeat loads. Okay. Model the loads as load groups and no more as primary loads. Okay. okay, so now let's have a look on this real and unreal load cases. Okay, So what do I mean by real load cases are dead loads, dead load plus live load, dead load plus wind load, dead load plus live load plus wind load, dead load plus static seismic, dead load plus lateral air pressure, dead load plus buoyancy. So you see one common point on the real load cases Dead load will be always there in the gravity load. Whether you apply wind load or live load or seismic load, dead load, dead load will always neutralize some of them and may sometimes add to that uh, uh, the other load, the unreal load. So that's why it always is better that you model real load cases for analyzing your structure. That way you save a lot of your analysis time and uh, results will be more accurate. Unreal load case on other case, uh, the uh, other side, you can see uh, live load acting alone, wind load acting alone, static seismic load acting alone, lateral lead pressure, like underground structures, uh, retaining walls uh, acting alone, buoyancy due to water uh, table uh, uh, acting alone, which are never going to act on the site alone. That's why I call them as unreal load cases. Okay, Always they act together with dead load. Dead load, what I mean, at least the self-weight of the structure, isn't it? So, very important slide that explains about real, and most of you know this already, but the way you apply the load on your structure, many of us forget that these unreal load case will never act alone in the site. So many of you may argue that you get of that in the load combinations. But note that load combinations combines the results. They don't combine the load in StatPro. Okay, let me explain that about uh, uh, the difference between this load combinations and repeat load and this load group slash reference load in this slide. This is the most important slide in my presentation for today. Load combination combines the results of primary load cases. Note that underline the word results. Load combination combines the results of primary load cases. It doesn't combine the primary load cases, but it combines the results of the primary load cases. Because all these programs, these programs were written many, many years back, nearly 35 to 40 years back. During those times, uh, personal computers never existed. So the programmers tries to 
minimize the computer resources as far as possible. So combining the results is just a, just an algebraic summation of the results. It doesn't use much of the processing power of the computer. Many of these programs combines the results in the load combinations instead of commanding the loads, which the repeat load command does. The repeat load command combines the primary load cases to create another primary load. And let's have a look on this load group command, okay, our reference load command. They don't do any combination. It's just a reference load. Okay. So load combination is algebraic summation of the results of the primary load cases and hence doesn't require much of processing power of time. Repeat load creates a new load matrix and analysis needs to be performed like any other primary load case, hence require more processing power and time. Load groups or reference loads don't need to be analyzed by itself, but they can be called in the primary load cases to create real load cases, underline the word real load cases, which can then be analyzed. Primary load cases in load combinations need to be analyzed first before using them in the load combos. So that is the drawback of the load combos. That is the load drawback of the repeat load command. But even the even for the repeat load, the primary load case needs to be analyzed first before using them in the repeat load. So these are the pitfalls of, of these two commands. The primary load cases includes unreal load cases like win load, seismic load, buoyancy load, lateral load, acting alone. Uh, lateral load pressure acting alone, which never act happens in fact, they need to be fast analyzed before we start using them in load questions and reviews. That's the pitfalls of these two commands. But the beauty of this reference load command is that the load groups need not be analyzed first. Underline need not be analyzed first before using them in the primary loads. Hence, it is more efficient and time-saving for the structural engineers. We analyze only real load cases if we start practicing using these load groups and reference loads. Load combinations are used in simple structures with linear static analysis. Repeat loads are used in moderate structures with P delta, geometric nonlinear, and buckling analysis. Load groups and reference loads are used in moderate to complex structures with P delta, nonlinear, buckling analysis, and nonlinear cable analysis. The problem in using a repeat load in a geometric nonlinear analysis is that sometimes the results diverge. You know, it, uh, geometric nonlinear analysis and even p-delta analysis requires you uh, to do iterations. Okay, so the user can specify the number of iteration. Sometimes the results will never get converge. The reason is because uh, sometimes you may apply unreal load cases like bean load acting alone where the structure will just simply fly away, hold, uh, hold down by the force without even considering the self weight of the structure. So that's why the load groups and reference loads are useful when you perform P delta or nonlinear analysis uh, so that you analyze only for real load cases that are going to act in the site and no need to uh, spend your time in converging the non real load cases. Let's learn more about that, uh, the examples. <clears throat> in the StatPro physical modeler, which is available in the StatPro Connect Edition, the load combinations can either be done using the analytical superposition or using the repeat load command. So this can be set up in the file options menu, analysis model options. This is in the uh, physical modeler. So you can set up this by default. Is, uh, it is same like load combinations, but you can change that to use repeat load, the combination method. Okay. I recommend you to uh, do that using this repeat load option. Okay. So now let's go through our four examples. So each example I cover in three to four minutes, uh, maximum five minutes. Okay. The first example, let's look at this uh, underground uh, 2D tunnel or culvert. Okay. In Singapore, there are a lot of uh, MRT stations uh, uh, underground, so we have this underground tunnels for railways uh, as well as roads also. Okay. So this is important for analyzing these structures. So here you see that I just modeled this uh, uh, tunnel uh, in StatPro physical modeler by just using one, two, three, four, five. Two horizontal uh, beams, the slabs, I realize that's beam because I'm modeling it as 2D and three walls. Okay. 
out of that uh, two exterior walls are retaining the soil outside. So let's see example 1A, tunnel with load groups. So I'm going to show you how to model this load groups in uh, modeler. Okay. So this is a, a short video. So you can see this physical modeler. I hope you are, all of you are able to see the video. Uh, Derek and uh, Nazreen, please confirm it in the chat window. Okay. So, so in the physical modeler, you can see that uh, there's five members are modeled and the offsets are done automatically. <clears throat> and um, the right side wall, I specified as uh, tension only. The left side wall is uh, compression only and the bottom wall is uh, compression only. The bottom slab is compression only. So this is the left side wall. You can see it's compression only, and the spring is very right in the direction. Compression only direction is also in the X direction. And the bottom slab is uh, in the vertical Y direction, KY, is compression only again. And the right side wall is tension only. The spring is very right in the uh, X direction. Okay, so we model that in the model menu in uh, the physical modeler, and we can verify and edit that in the spreadsheet view in the physical modeler. So the, these are the four load groups in our model. Thanks for confirming. Okay. Uh, so we have dead load, surcharge load, and uh, uh, lateral earth pressure and uplift. Okay. So dead load is nothing but uh, the self weight, and the surcharge load is the soil on top of the slab on the bot on the top. And then we have this lateral earth pressure acting on both sides uh, laterally. So this lateral earth pressure is uh, varying uh, trapezoidal load. Depending on the depth of this uh, tunnel, this load may vary. Finally, is the uplift due to the water table. So these are the four uh, load groups I have created in the Stratpro physical modeler. And next comes the loads, the load cases, actual load cases. So here you see that I create real load cases like dead load acting alone. It's the first load case. And next is dead load plus surcharge load, which is also a real load case. And the next load is dead load plus lateral earth pressure, which is also a real load case. And finally, uh, dead load plus surcharge plus lateral earth pressure plus uh, uplift by C. So you see on the right side the load group factors. So here where I put in the the service uh, load factors. Okay. So this is the way I call in the primary uh, call in the load groups, the reference loads, into the real primary load cases to create uh, real load cases. Okay, so we have four load groups in our model and four load cases, primary load cases in our model. Note that these four primary load cases are actually combining these uh, load groups, okay? And no combinations in our model. For this model, there is, I didn't use any load combinations. Okay, I use the primary load cases to combine the load cases, okay? And now I hit this return to analytical model command, and it, now you can see the members are getting splitted, and I use the, the line, the member support command in the physical modeler, which automatically created this uh, spring supports in the bottom, uh, as well as the uh, the walls on the left and right. Okay. So here you can see the load definitions for the reference load cases. Load groups are getting translated as reference loads in the analytical modeler. Okay, and then you can see there are the actual primary load cases. Uh, there we use a reference to create the real primary load cases. Load, dead load plus uh, it turns so and so. Okay. So then we go to the analysis command, analysis page, and add the uh, analysis command, perform analysis. And now we do the analysis. And note that since our model has tension compression springs, this, is, this will be a multi linear uh, iterating. So, so this requires the program to iterate and find out all the springs uh, modeled in the structure, uh, taking only the forces that have been uh, assigned to them. For example, a compression-only spring should take only the compression load 
and tensional leaf spring should take only the tension load. And if the tensional leaf spring is taking compression load, the program should inactivate and re reform the stiffness matrix and uh, redo the analysis. That's why we, I call this as a multi-linear analysis. And here's the envelope of the bending moment diagram for all our real load cases. So here you can see it's a part, uh, uh, bending moment uh, envelope, uh, symmetrical, perfect symmetrical. Then file, uh, there are uh, no instability warnings. Okay, there are just some notes, uh, which you can go through it in detail and uh, can uh, ignore it. And then you can see the convergence and the number of iterations for each load case, the tension, compression, convergence information. So the output file is clean without any errors or any warnings. And uh, we com finished completing the analysis. The deflection, uh, uh, maximum deflection, uh, 30 millimeter okay, for this model. Okay, so with that, uh, we'll uh, move on to the next slide. Tunnel, the same tunnel, example 1B, with repeat loads. The previous one was example 1A, tunnel with reference loads or um, uh, load groups. The next example is a tunnel with repeat loads, the same tunnel. Okay. So another uh, short video that will explain you the same model being analyzed using the repeat load command. So uh, you can see this is a 2D tunnel with repeat loads. Okay. And you can see this uh, definitions don't have any reference loads and the primary load cases are dead load. Uh, and, and there we see the unreal load cases like surcharge load, lateral load, acting alone, lateral air pressure load and the uh, buoyancy load. Okay. So I, I note that uh, the same model, I use it by explaining the difference between repeat load and load combo. So I inactivated the load combo, and below that you can see the repeat. The top repeat load is that you need to model the primary load case first before you call them in the repeat load case. So you see the deflection 161 millimeter compared to the 30 millimeter, 30 millimeter displacement we got with the load groups command because of the load case is jumping up without even considering the gravity load case the dead load case sulfate case okay all the springs below are compression only springs and except the rightmost spring where i use it as a bi-directional spring to avoid instability in the model so you see the bending moment diagram is not symmetrical and even the load and the bending moment envelope also it's not symmetrical you see the the leftmost uh, bending moment um, diagram and the compare it with the right side is not symmetrical. Okay, so this is uh, the problem in using repeat loads because uh, this envelope diagram is uh, no more correct because it envelops the unreal load cases results such as uh, uplift acting and lateral air pressure acting alone, touch charge load acting alone, which is not correct. So care should be taken that you omit the results of the unreal load cases and consider only the real load cases results. Uh, then you can um, make the analysis results correct, but you should take care of omitting the unreal load cases. So that is the pitfall in using repeat loads. Now let's have a look on the load combos. You should not use load combination command whenever you do this underground structures like tunnel structures, but let's see what happens if you use it. Again, a short uh, video explaining the pitfall of uh, using load combination command in the underground structures like Okay, so internal 2D structure, and there you can see the load cases, four primary load cases and four combinations, okay? In all my trainings and uh, webinars, I do promote this message to not use load combination commands whenever you have spring compression, spring tension, member compression, member tension command, or P delta analysis, or nonlinear analysis, or buckling analysis. But still, I see many users using load combination command. You see, the, the pitfalls are that the unreal load cases are analyzed. Uh, 
which gives wrong results, results are coming the load combinations to give you the results for which you design which is absolutely wrong look at the envelope diagram which is again not symmetrical again wrong And look at the displacements and reactions. We all get uh, different results. So let's tabulate that. So the next slide uh, tabulates the difference between uh, the same model analyzed using load groups, repeat loads, load combinations. That's the difference. The maximum deflection in my load group model is 30 millimeter only, whereas the maximum deflection in my repeat loads and load combinations are 161 millimeter. Okay, that's because of the uplift, the unreal load cases are that getting analyzed separately. Reason for that. And look at the maximum bending moment diagram. Uh, sorry, maximum bending moment, the maximum positive and negative. Okay, and you see a difference when you use repeat load. The difference in between repeat load and uh, load groups are negligible, 1.48% only. But the difference between load groups and load combinations is 30%. See the value 3,292 3, compared to 2,533. The bending moment, okay. And the maximum reactions, okay. I'm just putting in the maximum positive and negative reactions in F, Y, and F, X directions. You see for load combination and repeat load, the results are changing 100% because um, you see the negative reaction is zero, whereas uh, here we get nearly 192 and 192 kN negative reactions. So this uh, slide explains you the results uh, drastically varying and which one to believe. Okay. Load groups, they are the heroes. Okay. They help you to model real load cases that is actually happening in the site and analyzing only the real load cases and getting more realistic results, more accurate results. So I hope with this slide, you understand the importance of using load groups. Next, uh, let's uh, go above the ground. Okay, uh, Let's use this small guide tower example. So first we'll uh, uh, see this uh, guide tower with the load groups, reference loads. So this uh, guide tower is uh, modeled with uh, cables, okay? linear cables. I have not modeled non-linear cables, which we look at the next example. Again, a small video, which takes some time to upload. Uh, uh, yeah. So I just have uh, these uh, three load cases to simplify this model. A dead load, which is having only self weight command, and then the wing load, and the external wire load or the upper terrain load. <coughs> and then I use the reference load command to combine this uh, primary load cases. Uh, sorry, not primary load cases, to combine this uh, 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 reference loads. Okay, so the reference loads are actually modeled in the definitions, load definitions, and the primary load cases are using this reference load to create load sets. And note that they are not load combos, they are still primary load cases, but combining the reference loads. Okay, note that our results are free from errors and warnings, and let's look at the results. And there you can see the max to reflect 154 millimeter. And there you can see our uh, support re reactions and uh, our member forces, the axial forces. Uh, let's have a look on the input file and here you can see how these reference loads are defined and how the primary load cases are created with the help of the reference loads. And here you can see the syntax or one times the factor, or two times the factor, or three, and so and so. 
So this is how I create primary load cases, which are actually combined reference loads without using load combination command or repeat load command, but using reference load command. Here's the output file, free from errors or warnings, no instability messages. Here you can see the nodes showing the convergence of the iterations. Because this is using cable members, it requires iterative analysis. So each load case has to be analyzed separately, and each may require different amount of iteration. And for each load case, we need to check the total applied load and the total reaction by using this uh, reactions page static check table. OK, so with that, uh, we'll uh, move on to the next slide. Using, uh, sorry, we already, uh, sorry, uh, we already seen the video for the load groups. I don't want to spend time in uh, showing the videos of uh, repeat load and load combos. In the same way we modeled uh, using the uh, the first example. Okay, so but let's compare the results. Okay, by using the load groups and repeat loads and load combos. So you can see the deflections are uh, almost between load groups and load uh, repeat loads, but load combos gives a lesser deflection. Okay, the difference is um, twelve percent difference when uh, when compared with load groups and load combinations. But when you compare the load groups and repeat loads, the difference is only zero percent. Okay, same for act. Axial force on the members, uh, you see the repeat load and load groups almost give the same answer, but low co load combos gives uh, different results that varies by 42%. And maximum reactions, again, the difference between repeat load and load groups are almost uh, zero, uh, but the load combinations uh, results are changing 80%. Unbelievable. So for this slide explains to you the drawbacks of using load combination command in a structure that has member cable command. Next example three is a, is a real structure that is constructed in Singapore. Um, this is using tension rod system. You see the span of this truss uh, is an internal truss. Uh, it's actually a skylight for a crematorium, a 16.8 meter and uh, we used only a 16 millimeter rod diameter rod okay it's called tension rod system now, nowadays many buildings have this tension rod system to support the glass panels for the walls okay so that's why this uh, example is important nowadays okay so the the, the important thing about this example is that uh, all the members cable members declared as cable members because they are only 16 millimeter rod okay except the vertical members these vertical members are a 50 millimeter pipe section so they are truss members they take both compression and tension whereas the horizontal members are all cable members and uh, this middle members here these, these are also truss members and this structure is disjointed you see here, here is a big concrete beam. So we have went to model this concrete beam here. So these are three different structures which are disconnected from each other. So let's uh, see this model. Uh, how do we model this uh, with the reference load command? And I'm not going to bore you showing the modeling. Um, most of you in the modeling portion, but uh, just the usage of reference load command uh, in this example. See these sections. Uh, you can see all the members are cables except uh, some members, uh, the vertical members are truss. And you can see 16 mm rods for many of these members, members, which also has a one kilonewton uh, initial tension. And then vertical members are truss members having 50 millimeter uh, pipes. Okay, and let's go to the loading page. Ah, so again, it shows this uh, specification page explains this uh, member cable command is specified everywhere. And here's the elevation view. You see all the top and bottom cords are all declared as uh, cable members, except the vertical middle members, or truss. Okay, and the loads are modeled as reference loads. 
किसी और वन और टेम्परेचर डेड लो लाइव लो टेम्परेचर elongation or contraction okay because this is a crematorium temperature load is a huge 50 degree celsius change in temperature and that will cause us do analysis this start to use the non linear cable analysis using the perform cable analysis so here you can see the primary load cases i use it to combine the loads uh, using reference loads and i don't use any load combination command i don't use any repeat load command so actually i analyzed this structure many many years back during that time the reference load command was not available so i modeled it using a repeat load command but then the drawback was i need to model this unreal load cases like temperature elongation and contraction which never converged that time so i spent a lot of time in cases Okay, non-linear cable analysis involves um, nearly six parameters that needs to be input by the user, um, but that requires a lot of experience and error, uh, particularly with this unreal load cases, which is never going to act alone, like temperature load acting alone, is pure waste of time in uh, spending time in, in making that load case converge. See this iteration going on, cable case converge. case you can see i am applying the loads 145 load steps and each step is getting iterated and um, converge okay so you can see uh, this model is using reference loads so all the load cases are analyzed not all the load cases i'm sorry the real load cases are getting analyzed and here's the results here you can see the maximum deflection is 82 mm and uh, we can go this uh, support reactions and um, static check that static check may not tally directly because this is a non linear cable analysis so you won't get zero the difference between the total applied load and total reactions it may not be a perfect zero but that's okay for a non linear analysis okay now we will look at the axial force diagram the blue color is your tension members the red color member uh, red color is the compression member so we can color code it instead of viewing the diagram so you can see this top chord ball intention even the ball intention because the cable members the pre tension with the application of load the pre tension may get reduced by the still will be in tension the must they take compression so we can view the magnitude of this uh, tension and compression by looking at this annotation so here you can see uh this tension uh, value axial tension and axial compression values note that they are all uh, very small members 16 mm rods and uh, 50 mm pipe section uh, okay the cables are all 16 mm rods the output file you can see is uh, clean there are no errors only one warning is about the structure is disjointed because uh, as explained before uh, this is a completely disjointed structure and i use strat truss command uh, to avoid many instability warnings because uh, this is even though it's a space frame all the members here are either a truss member or a cable member so i use the tr first command as strat truss uh, and uh, that eliminated most of the warning messages instability me messages okay. we uh, we are interested only in cl forces on the members okay so so you can see cable case complete uh, the loads are applied in 145 load steps 100% of load is applied and the right side is the number of iteration for each load step so this is a uh, non linear cable analysis and uh, uh, we need to spend a little bit time in uh, arriving at those parameters the sag minimum stability and the number of steps the stability is the artificial stabilizing stiffness matrix external stiffness matrix that doesn't exist in the site Uh, that get reduced to zero uh, uh, till the uh, at the at the lot last iteration okay okay so that explains the tension rod system with reference loads now let's have a look on the same model with repeat loads the main problem in uh, using the repeat load for this kind of structure is that the unreal load cases like temperature load acting alone has to be analyzed first before we use them 
in the repeat load combinations. And those unreal temperature load acting alone cause a lot of problems in convergence. So I spend a lot of time in finding uh, the values of those parameters uh, for the nonlinear cases to make it converge. If they don't converge, then we cannot use them in the repeat loads, isn't it? So that is the pitfall or drawback of using repeat load command, which doesn't exist in reference load command. So here you can see the file, uh, the member trust and member cables and uh, the primary load cases, dead load, live load, and each load case that use the perform and cable analysis with all those parameters, followed by the change command to reset the stiffness matrix for each load case. And note that the parameters are different for each load cases. So that's where we need to spend time in uh, carefully arriving at those values, or the parameter values for the uh, cable analysis. So this is a non-linear cable analysis. And um, I'm using this uh, StatPro advanced analysis, so the analysis is faster, but this basic uh, nonlinear cable analysis doesn't require StatPro advanced license, so even StatPro basic users can use this analysis. Only thing, it takes more time for this uh, convergence for this analysis. <clears throat> Note that the time taken using the repeat load compared to the reference load is more because I need to analyze and make the load cases, all the load cases to be converged because uh, unrealistic loads like temperature loads have to be analyzed separately before we use them in the repeat load. Okay, so now you see the, the results are uh, almost similar, uh, the reflection results and uh, support reactions. And you can see the, the difference of the statics check uh, still okay, as I mentioned before, uh, the static check won't be a pure zero. Uh, difference won't be a pure zero uh, because it's a non-linear analysis. Okay. So now we we'll have a look at this uh, uh, color code of this uh, axial tension and compression on a structure. Again, as expected, is almost same results such as uh, the load group. And some members don't have any color. They are inactive, meaning uh, they are cable, but may be subject to compression load. So the program automatically inactivates them. OK, so there you can see some notes. There's just one warning. The structure is disjointed. That is OK. We can ignore it. The structure is analyzed as a truss, stat truss model, even though it's a space frame. Uh, since we have cables and trusses only in the model, it's analyzed as stat truss. It's a truss model. We are bothered only about the axial forces. We can see this cable cases are converged for each and every load cases. Output file is clean from any instability warnings. Okay, not even one instability warning, even though we have hundreds of cable members and trust members in the model. Okay, so here's the isometric view of the tension and compression color coding. Okay, next we'll look at the final example, load group for MOS model. I didn't do a comparison of the results between repeat load and reference load for that model, the previous example three, because the results are almost the same. Okay, absolutely no difference between the results. Okay. But uh, just note that I, I need to spend more time in uh, finding out those uh, parameters for the nonlinear cable analysis for unreal load cases like temperature load acting alone in the repeat load model. That is the major problem in using repeat load in that model. Load groups for any complex structure is very smooth because we analyze it for real load cases. Convergence will be much, much faster. Now let's move on to the next example on uh, seismic analysis. How load groups can help you in doing seismic analysis. Traditionally, uh, many users model the MOS model for static seismic as well as response spectra. Okay. But now with the load group command, 
this process is simplified by creating just one load case for uh, uh, sorry so just creating one load group for mass okay so there you can see the first load group is uh, of type as sulfate in all small building structure so here yeah, i have column drops and uh, shear valve with opening just one button click measures the complete model and the uh, physical model here's a physical model in my previous uh, webinar on the for the physical Uh, on the recordings, you link for the recording. Please contact help you to possible possible directions. And all all are modeled in just one load group. And uh, under this category case load, then we here uh, the layer factors the mainly for groups. Unless I apply number load as or since I use the opening load generation, I have to use the primary load case. And same thing for our response spectral load case. I have to use the primary load case, but. But those response factor load case will use the mass matrix uh, which we created in the load groups automatically. Okay, so just one location we define the mass, and though that mass will be utilized by any response factor load cases or static seismic load cases in our model. So these are all dead load like which is using reference loads both wind load is not using reference load is using the wind definition and reference load is also using the reference load just for a mass matrix okay but actual response spectra is applied here as a primary load of this okay you can also use the static seismic uh, uh, method also okay and then we analyze it And let's have a look on the results. Make sure the displacements are reasonable. Look at the output file. Make sure there's no errors or warnings. And uh, read this note. MOS model form will be used in seismic response spectra time history loading. So that is the reference load uh, number one, where we use the MOS type uh, reference load. R1, where we applied 100% uh, of dead load plus approximately 50% of live load in all possible directions. So to create the mass matrix, which is then used in the seismic analysis, both static and dynamic. So they are, they are just note, not a warning. Okay, just for the user's information. And then we move on to this uh, uh, agent solution. So you can see the method used for agent solution subspace iteration method as a default. And we can see load case number eight. Uh, here we didn't define any mass modeling. Traditionally, in the previous versions, we used to do the mass modeling just before the response spectra on the same load case. But here you see that load case number eight doesn't have any mass modeling. It, it, it uses the mass model created in the load group under the mass category. So here is the agent solution mass participation factor. Make sure we attain 100% mass participation. In this case, even after using 50 more shapes, I, I had only 96.7%, but, but by using the missing mass correction method, I got 100% mass participation in both X and Z direction. Okay, so here's the Z direction. I got 100% mass participation. So hence the base shear computed would be accurate. So anytime we can 
I switched back in the analytic and physical modeler and uh, in the physical modeler uh, in my previous webinar I explained how to create this response vector load case using the catalog uh, menu in the physical modeler and here we have the option to uh, choose our design code uh, sorry seismic uh, uh, and also in the file options menu here we specify the option uh, method for the eigen method subspace or lang source or ridge vector and also the number of more shapes and also uh the include missing mass a very important command to make sure uh, get 100% mass participation factor okay so comparison of the results for this is the for the previous example so you can see uh the different Trans between reference load and repeat load, 12%, and the axial pose is just 2% and 2.5%. So, for the, when you compare only repeat load and reference load, the difference is not much. But when we really compare the load combinations, uh, there's too much difference. So be careful in using the load combination command. Okay. So now that we have seen the uh, four examples, let's summarize uh, what we have learned today. Okay. Load groups, otherwise called as reference loads, is a useful feature to model both real and unreal load cases which are not analyzed. These load groups are then called in the primary load cases to create real load sets which are analyzed. By omitting the need for analyzing the unreal load cases, we can not only save time, but also our results are more accurate as we do not account for the results for the unreal load cases acting alone. So the envelopes are all accurate so unreal load cases on a multilinear analysis like tunnel subjected to buoyancy will give instability large deflections and unsymmetrical deflections or unsymmetrical bending moment diagrams solving unreal load cases in a geometric nonlinear analysis like this kind of nonlinear cable analysis may give instability problem or the solution may diverge hence load groups helps us to do efficient and accurate analysis by allowing us to analyze only the realistic load cases. So I hope by this time you understand the importance of load groups and I hope you mean by real load cases. Okay, so that brings to the end of my webinar. A few uh, important slides uh, before we go for a poll again. Uh, we have an server in Bentley. Uh, for Bentley users, please utilize this during this uh, work from home days. Uh, the, all these trainings are available on demand. For those old users of StatPro V8 version, we have uh, uh, training uh, videos available for migrating from V8i to Connect Editions. So please uh, utilize this. It's all for free for Bentley users. Log in and find training, search for StatPro, and you can find a lot of training. After uh, undergoing the trainings, you can print out the sites. Uh, from this uh, land server itself. It's all for free. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Bentley Structural. We have many videos uh, uploaded there almost uh, every month. Getting support from Bentley, many of you already started using our service request manager on our community site, forums, blogs, uh, also Connect Advisor, which gets opened up automatically when you open the program. So let's bring to the final uh, uh, polls, two polls. Okay. Now that you understand the use of the load groups, do you plan to use this feature in your future projects? Please answer this yes or no. Uh, so we can understand that you really understand the importance of load groups. And then um, we can also come to know how many of you do uh, moderate to complex projects using StatPro that requires any one of the different type of analysis. Um, that's required, that's utilizing this load proof feature. Okay, so I'll wait for uh, five more seconds for you to answer this poll. Okay, let me move on to this uh, next slide. Okay, uh, let us know if you, anyone of you need to be contacted by our sales team.
Okay, so with that, uh, we'll open up for uh, a session. Uh, please type in uh, your questions on the bottom of uh, your screen. I'll try answering it one by one. Okay, let me go through the uh, question and answers one by one. Okay, uh, one question is how to consider positive and negative eccentricity in the static seismic analysis. Uh, uh, I don't know which code uh, you are uh, using, but any code, uh, most of the codes, uh, seismic, uh, static seismic codes that is implemented in StatPro, we have this option of uh, considering the uh, positive and negative eccentricity. Wait a minute. Okay, sorry. Uh, the, the, the questions are pouring in. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Timing. I'll go from the first question to the last. Okay. <clears throat> okay, some of you asked for the link for the recordings. Uh, don't worry, uh, everyone who have registered for this webinar, you will get a thank you email. For those of you who are registered for this webinar but uh, didn't attend this live, they'll also receive an email, the link of the recording. Okay. Please wait for uh, uh, till tomorrow. Okay. Uh, we don't provide any handout seminar, but we do provide the record seminar. Okay, uh, Leo Macdo. Okay, how much is US dollar connect? Uh, you need to uh, be contacted by one of our sales team. Um, I don't know the real uh, uh, price in the US dollar, so uh, but I'll pass on to our sales team. They'll keep in touch with you. I pass on your uh, email address to, to them. How to check the version? Uh, the version you can check by going to the help menu in StatPro. Our strands, sorry, stat and micro strands, similar representation today. Uh, stat and micro strand, some features are similar, but many features are not. I I don't think micro strand have this reference or feature, and also micro strand do not have plate elements, solid elements, and many things so and so. So Stat Pro is a much larger program that is used worldwide. Whereas microstrand is uh, mainly used in the Austin, New Zealand region. But now that we have the Austin, uh, we are a user to StatPro. So microstrand users can upgrade to our structural enterprise license. That way they can continue using their existing microstrand program and slowly migrate it to StatPro plus many other programs that includes RAM, nearly nine programs. So please keep in touch with the owner for sales. Uh, they will help you to uh, microstrand to structural enterprise license. Uh, one of you are reported you can't able to see the presentation slide. I'm sorry for that. It may be a local problem. Please see the recording. Okay. Uh, copy of the webinar. Yes, you have a uh, recording of the webinar. Please watch for the email from us. Can we discuss dynamic analysis in StatPro? Yes, definitely. We'll. I'll arrange for another session, uh, uh, special interest, specifically for dynamic Analysis is a big topic, not just for analysis, but also for uh, X also. Okay, so uh, subdivided into uh, time history analysis can be subdivided into uh, machine vibration and then ground motion. Okay, dynamic analysis. Fully capable dynamic analysis. Another question from Mark Yee at the I Corporation Philippines. Uh, about name that was turned on the circuit, but it's not really centered through to the line or team. So, if you have any uh, questions on that, I would suggest you to uh, raise a 
have a sticker just drop me an email i'll i'll try to connect you with the right person to help you on this i don't have any, really any control on this certificate okay you sound always loading can i hear you clearly i'm sorry for uh, please watch recording copy for present yes will be available for you shortly through email when you use load combi repeat load when to use load combination repeat load and load group as i explained in my presentations load combinations can be used only for structures uh, whereas repeat load and load groups are used for moderate to complex structures where where we have pdl non linear also when structures have members inactive members compression springs tension springs in all those cases you should not use load combinations but either use repeat load or load group i would suggest uh, load groups because i don't need to analyze for unreal load cases which repeat loads requires so please watch my recording particularly the slide where i explain and compare these three three different uh, methods it really explains the the advantages and disadvantages of these three methods Uh, please, uh, sorry to use the pointers. Uh, recorder is yes, available for you, email. Okay, sorry. May I know why during analysis my structure fly away? I didn't hear clearly. Clearly, just came. Uh, University of Malaya uh, will fly away. For example, when you have a, a building sitting. on the ground okay. uh, on the ground means um, uh, let's say uh, uh, simply sitting okay uh, and then you apply a wind load high wind load okay uh, high velocity wind load then the structure will just simply fly away if we don't even consider the self weight of the structure isn't it many of us we apply the primary load cases separately load 1 dead load load 2 live load load 3 wind load isn't it load, load 3 wind is not a real load case isn't it the structure will just fly away so that's why this load groups will help you to model real load cases like dead load plus live load dead load plus live load plus wind load okay. dead load plus wind load so they will not fly away so that's the importance of repeat load and load groups okay when it says simply supporting is uh, not hold down to the ground okay just like a uh, like a steel water tank and simply ground okay or a concrete water tank simply sitting on the ground okay okay so some of you uh, mentioned uh, this, this some problems in the video audio okay please uh, i'm sorry for that i don't have much, much control the recording if you still face some problem in the recording i'll record it and uh, i'll put it again don't worry some of you say now it is okay okay if you use load groups what about factor loads uh, load groups or uh, primary load cases except that they are not being analyzed and uh, the factor loads combinations the, the factors you should do it when you call this load groups in the primary load cases remember the primary load cases spreadsheet which i showed you where i used the the load factors okay I, in my example i used just one but you can use any load combination factor i i just used uh, service factors but you can use the ultimate factors as well so when you use load groups you can use still use the load factors not in the load groups but in the primary load cases when you call in the load groups with the proper factor that you want to apply i hope that i answer uh, call it for simple structure where there is no nonlinearity is it more efficient to just use the traditional load combination which uses only algebraic summation compared to load group uh, i don't agree with that load groups uh, even for simple structure is more, more efficient uh, because you are not analyzing for unreal load cases isn't it when you use load combinations you are modeling the primary load cases unreal load cases separately and you are analyzing for it and you are combining the results of those unreal load cases which is not correct isn't it so as far as possible start start using load group command uh, that will be more efficient okay. because you are analyzing only for real load cases but uh, uh, some some simple structures uh, where uh, you really don't have much of unreal load cases 
uh, then load combinations uh, will be faster. Yes, I agree, because it combines only the results and doesn't require much of computer processing power. So it'll be more uh, efficient, I agree. But make sure uh, the unreal load cases, okay? Make sure the unreal load cases are not taken into account for your design, okay? I hope that I answered your question. Okay, and uh, another question. Uh, sorry, my God, there are t at least hundreds of questions. No, so I need to answer really be faster. Do you mind if you can share the start pro model so we can try ourselves? Yes, sure. Please drop me an email so that I don't forget. I can send you the models. Okay, it's good for learning. Uh, a copy of the file in presentation. Yes, you'll get an email for recording. Possible to rewind parts. I want to really watch. Yes, definitely. You please uh, watch the recording that you can rewind it. Can you share the mo your modeling? Uh, you mean uh, the model? Yes, definitely. Please drop your email. I can send. How much is the difference? Can you tell in this case? Uh, as I explained, sir, okay, uh, the, for the other three examples, uh, out of the four, I, uh, three examples, I showed the difference. So most of the cases, you can see that the load combination gives wrong results. Uh, repeat loads and uh, load co uh, and reference loads almost gives the same answer. Okay, another question uh, from Opus Consultants. Sorry, there was a glitch just now when you talked about using load combinations completely wrong. Can I just check, is this just my personal problem as uh, does it affect everyone? Uh, can you repeat it if not? Okay, please watch the recording. Okay, that's the answer. Okay. Can I get the copy of the slides? Not, not the slide, get the recording. Okay. Uh, based on the compassion table of a tunnel model, it seems designing for load combinations is more conservative as it shows higher value. Please correct me me if I don't. Okay. Uh, that is absolutely wrong. Sometimes it may be conservative, sometimes it may be totally uh, wrong. Okay. First of all, try to understand, don't think about conservative side. It's very important that you need to analyze your model correctly. Analyzing your channel model for uplift alone is totally absurd, isn't it? Uplift alone is never going to act. The self-fight will neutralize it, isn't it? So, Please make sure you model your load cases correctly so that it matches to the site conditions. Okay. If load combination is not accurate, in what situation should we use it? A good question from University of Malaya, Mr. Ang. Load combinations is not accurate in what situation should we use it? Okay. Uh, as I said in my presentation, for simple structures which doesn't have any of this special uh, requirements for structure, like no springs, compression command, no member tension command, no member cable, no PDL analysis. If it's a simple structure, then you can still use load combinations, okay? So in that case, the load combinations results and uh, repeat load results and reference load results will all match, okay? And um, for simple, small structures, uh, that will be more efficient too, to use load combinations, okay? So, uh, for simple structures, uh, you don't need to use reference loads and uh, repeat loads because uh, that has more processing power. So uh, for large models, that may take more time. Okay, So uh, consider all this plus and minus, and uh, if you see that the load combinations you can still use, please go ahead using that, but make sure this, all these special commands are not existing in your model. In real-life structural analysis, we, do we... Yeah, actually, to solve the warning to ensure the accuracy of results, that's where we as engineers come, come into picture. Look at the warning, and then, for example, if you get an instability warning, look at the deflection diagram, make sure the deflections are reasonable. When I say deflections are reasonable, it should be in the order of millimeters and not kilometers. I, I get some emails with the models um, users sending me where deflections are in kilometers, and they still continue doing the design and saying that uh, the results doesn't match with their manual calculations. So look at the deflection de results, make sure that they're reasonable. Look at the statics check, make sure the total applied load and total reactions are matching. Uh, for linear analysis, and the difference should be zero. For non-linear analysis, the difference may not be zero, that is okay, okay. So you have to solve the warning message. If you see the deflections are unreal, if you see the uh, static check is not telling, but if these two are reasonable, if the static check is telling, the yeah, deflections is uh, reasonable, then sometimes you can ignore the warning message, okay? But not always. That's where we as an engineer come in and look into the warning message carefully and make a decision, okay? 
that's where experience comes in. Can I have your guide to our Start Pro input details for my practice? Sure, definitely. Please drop me an email like a model. Yeah. How do we put load factor in the load groups too? As I explained before, I already answered uh, the load factors. Uh, you call them in the primary loads and there you can put in the load factor. If load combination does not give true representation, then why the option is still made available? Why the result file does not indicate the proper combinations? Uh, okay, this is the same question I answered before. As load combination command, uh, we still need to keep it because for simple structures, we can still use it. Okay, uh, when I say simple structures, um, I explained this already several times. Okay, we can still. Uh, and it saves time. Load combination doesn't require much of processing power, so it saves time. Okay, so uh, for your simple structures, if peak load and load groups are uh, not required, then you can still use load combination command. Okay. Can you share the slide? This is the slides, for example, 1A and 1B and 1C is not shown properly. Please, uh, okay, I understand. Uh, please watch for recording. Okay. So we can include live load in reference load. Definitely, yes. Not just live load. I would suggest all possible loads, dead load, live load, wind load, everything you try to use it in reference load. And then uh, use your primary load case to model only load cases. Okay. If you could provide the style model presented, yes, definitely please drop me an email. Okay. Many of you are asking for the example files which I used. I, I'm happy to share it, but please uh, draw, send me an email. My email address is madan.elmali at bentley.com. Okay. It is there in my uh, in our invitations also. Uh, you can keep it to any one of us. They can uh, connect you to me. Why is it provided for Stat Pro? The same question many of us are asking. If the load combination command is not working properly. I don't say it's not working properly. You should understand the method, the, 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 the way these programs are developed 40 years back or 50 years back during the personal computers were not there. Okay. So load combinations reduces the analysis time by combining the not combining the loads. But nowadays, computers have uh, evolved. They are much, much faster compared to 50 years back. So time is no more uh, problem. So we can use more computer resources. So migrate from load combination to repeat load and load groups, and then you see the results, difference in results. For normal structures, simple structures, the results will be same, but when you, when you uh, model uh, complex structures, so just like the examples which I've shown, the four examples, then you can see the difference in results. Okay. Other than model will be good if you can share the slides showing the comparison of the results. I, unfortunately, um, as per company policy, we can't show the slides, but I'll try to send a PDF. Please drop me an email. Okay, uh, the recordings will be sent to you. Okay. I cannot catch up how to apply the seismic load on the model using load group. Please, okay, the load groups so you can't apply a seismic load. You know, as load groups are used only for mass modeling and also any other primary load case. For seismic load, you just still have to use the uh, the load definition. In my previous webinar last month, uh, I explained you how to model the seismic load. If you do not have the recording link, uh, please drop me an email. I can send you the link. I'll contact any one of us. Uh, copies of examples, I'm happy to share it. Please keep in touch with me. What is a mass load? A mass load is useful for dynamic analysis, also for static seismic. Okay. Uh, before we do a static seismic analysis or response spectra or time history, we need to do the mass modeling. Okay, so if you don't do seismic analysis, then don't need to learn about mass modeling. Okay, uh, I know some many users in Singapore don't do dynamic analysis, so you don't need to uh, know mass modeling. For other countries in Southeast Asia, have to do seismic analysis, so mass modeling is very very important. Are we allowed to download this video tutorial? Downloading may not be possible, but uh, you can view the recording later. Okay. You'll be getting an email with the link. Can we download okay, style models? Yes, I'm happy to share. Please email. Okay. How to combine other loads like dead load, thermal loads with response spectra? Uh, That's a very good question Okay, from Meenakshi from BMT. How to combine other loads like dead load, thermal loads with response spectra? Because response spectra, you cannot model it in load groups because uh, that's a dynamic analysis that has to be modeled in primary load cases. So you have to use load combination command for this. Okay, so the, we cannot use a repeat load. We cannot use a primary load case to combine a dead load and thermal response spectra. So you have to use a combination command for this. 
okay so you have we have to understand the limitations there are some limitations in using the load groups and repeat load okay for some cases we still have to use repeat, uh, load combination command it's a very good question how to consider the positive and negative eccentricity in static seismic load cases uh, oh, using the load factors okay so when you define the seismic loads and we act, when you apply the seismic loads you can use the positive and negative uh, eccentricity factors okay it's all available in the load dialog the seismic load dialog Uh, how, how to apply load factor for each dead load, live load, and low load, bin load, etc. in the load group, reference load. Uh, explain to apply the load factor in the primary load case when you call in the uh, load groups. What is the difference of Y and Y only in the spring support model? The Y option will uh, support, uh, will provide a spring in only in the Y direction, and um, MX and MZ will be fixed. Whereas Y only option in the spring support model will have a spring only in the Y only direction, and all other directions will be released. Okay, so that is the difference between Y only option in the spring support. In the last example, can you use reference load for the wind load? You can use, but you, you won't be able to enjoy the benefits of automatic wind load generation. If you want to apply the wind load as a nodal load or member load, it will manually calculate the wind load as a nodal load and member load, and apply it as a reference load itself as a nodal load or member load. Okay. But you cannot use the wind definition command. Okay. So that's the limit. Can we get a copy of the videos for examples? Definitely. Please watch for our email with the link. It seems that using load combination results is a higher value in terms of moment, shear, and deflection. Can we say that it gives an inaccurate but a more conservative results from v uh, No, we can't say like that. Certain examples, it may be on conservative side, but certain examples will be on uh, totally wrong side. So please understand the, the, the methods used in these three commands and uh, use it correctly. More important thing is you should analyze your structure uh, more uh, realistic, okay, as uh, to, as the loads uh, it experiences in the site. Okay, we consider notional load in direct analysis. They are assigned as repetitive loads in analytic model. <clears throat> the notional loads uh, you can apply uh, by using the automatic load combination command in the Statro analytical model. Uh, unfortunately, the notional loads are not yet available in the physical modeler yet, but they are available to automatically calculate in the analytical modeler. So use the automatic load combination generated op option in the analytical modeler there. Uh, you see a button to generate the notional loads automatically. Uh, time being, uh, those features are not available in the physical model. Uh, are there any online sessions, uh, lessons for with practical examples step by step? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, we have our LAN server where we have uh, on demand trainings available. Uh, apart from that, we also provide uh, 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 account specific uh, corporate training. Please do contact, uh, keep in touch with us. We can provide training at your organization. Repeat load, transform UDL load to point load at joint. Therefore, no effect of UDL load on member. Repeat load transform. I'm sorry, I'm not able to understand your query. If you can elaborate it more by email, I can happy to answer you. Repeat load transform UDL load to point load at joint. If the member is a bending member, definitely you will get a bending moment for the member load. Okay, even though it finally ultimately is going to be transferred to the joint, but before that uh, the member will bend if it is a bending member. <clears throat> When using load groups, is it important to define flow diagram? Uh, yes, when you do seismic analysis particularly, it is um, important to define the flow diagrams. Uh, but uh, if you don't use uh, a seismic analysis, the flow diagrams are not uh, import, not required. Okay. Uh, but uh, it's not compulsory that whenever you use load groups, it, it is uh, flow diagrams. Okay. Only for seismic analysis, I use uh, flow diaphragms. Whenever I want to achieve the in-plane rigidity of the floor, then only use flow diaphragms. How can we define the seismic load in the reference load using UVC? No, UVC uh, 97 uh, seismic load cannot be used in reference load. You have to still use the primary load case. Okay, so uh, as of now, the reference load has some limitations. This is one of that. Okay, I hope that answers your question. I got the point of loads group, but once you say we don't need to use load combination, then what about factor loads? The factor loads can be still used in primary loads itself. When 
We call the groups in the primary load. At that time itself, we can apply the factor load. I hope uh, I answered this many times, sorry. Okay, uh, the questions are repeating. Can we have the model? Uh, definitely, please keep in touch with us. I'll send you the models. Do we have tutorial in dynamic uh, analysis? Yes, we are, you know, learn server. We have uh, on-demand training videos available for dynamic analysis as well. Uh, if we design temporary structure, should we apply load groups um, from uh, Shanghai Channel Engineering? Uh, temporary structures has wind bracings. You use wind uh, tension rods as wind bracings, isn't it? So you have to use load groups, okay? If you use load combinations, the results will be wrong because the tension member has to be analyzed uh, for the lateral loads acting alone. And um, when it is subjected to compression, the tension member will be inactivated automatically. So it becomes a multi-linear analysis, isn't it? So uh, the, mo the load will be modeled correctly. When I say correctly, the real load case is analyzed. And the un unreal load cases should not be analyzed. And the results of unreal load cases should not be captured. So for that, uh, uh, the load group is very, very important, even for temporary structure, if we have the wind bracings model linear structure. Our SA application response spectra, uh, I explained that in my previous webinar. Uh, please uh, keep in touch with us to watch the recording of my previous webinar, response spectra. I believe RSA you mean by response spectra analysis. You can model that in the physical modeler. Uh, in a primary load case, not using a reference loads. Uh, meanwhile, by applying load group, the results will be more accurate as compared by using load common for every project. I don't say every project, uh, but any project that involves any of these cases, as I explained in my presentation, uh, then you can see the difference between the load combinations and the load groups. Okay, Not for every project, but any project that involves any one of these uh, special cases. Uh, I'm uh, white TYL parenting. I'm still using StatPro V8. I, can I update to the StatPro Connect uh, Connect version? Yes, you can update provided you are uh, you are still under maintenance with Bentley. So please keep in touch with any one of us, uh, our support team or uh, our channel partner. They will help you to upgrade to Connect Edition of StatPro. Okay, if you are already under uh, select, you can upgrade it uh, anytime by downloading the software. Or uh, under select, you just need to be uh, uh, under select, um, paying some maintenance fee, and then you can uh, download the software. Can I say that if the analysis is linear, there will be no difference in the three load treatments, load group, repeat load, and load combinations? Linear. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. When it comes to linear, that could be multilinear also. Remember, I, I've been using the word frequently, the multilinear command. Because even though it's a linear analysis, it is a multilinear because some of the spring supports are getting inactivated because uh, they are specified compression, but it may be subject to tension due to uplift. So it becomes a multilinear. Okay, so if you do not have those spring tension, spring compression, member tension, member compression, P delta, nonlinear, member cable commands, then you can see that the analysis will give same results when you use load combinations and repeat loads and load loops. But if this case is arise, then you see, notice that the load combinations start giving wrong answer because it combines the results and it doesn't loads, which load group and repeat load helps you to do that. Uh, it's upgrading from connect version 2 to 3 free. Uh, it, it all depends on whether you are under, under uh, maintenance or not. So please check um, whether uh, your company is still under maintenance uh, with Bentley. So if so, you can download the software. Very easy. If you already have a connection client installed, just look at your taskbar. You can see the Bentley connection client, and there you can see the update available. Click that button to update it. Okay. In some companies, uh, they have firewall issues, so please keep in touch with your IT team or your manager or your boss to get the download. Okay. Or you can finally uh, drop me an email if uh, I can try helping you. We have to find more about load groups and load references. Okay, just use our community site or simply do a Google search uh, difference between repeat load and uh, reference load. You will get a lot of answers that leads to a community site. Just do a simple Google search. Can we create load groups and templates for real load only? Load group templates for real load only. Uh, I don't know what you mean by templates. Um, the loads may vary from structure to structure. Okay, so 
un unfortunately now we do not have any templates for real load uh, and i don't think think uh, quite okay as, as long as you understand the importance of load groups then it's not much of problem in uh, creating them uh, in stat pro uh, my stat pro advanced uh, version 21.000 to is applicable to today training uh, yes but uh, my suggestion is um, uh, upgrade to start pro version 22 connect edition version 22 update 3 uh, where you can see a lot of improvements in the physical model okay but, but still uh, the previous version is also applicable for today training as well okay what is your recommendation on the use of the three different ways of load definition uh, my presentation is all about that please um, uh, watch the presentation once again and if you have any specific questions uh, please call me up or drop me an email i can help you to clarify your queries how authentically you saying load group is more accurate higher comparative results uh, all my 15 year uh, 25 years of experience with stat pro even before this load groups were invented 15 years back um, i was struggling uh, using the repeat load command when i do non linear analysis because i need to analyze for unreal load cases uh, convergence is wrong. okay so now that the load groups are available uh, now most of my uh, previous problems are solved easily because i can now model real load cases and uh, spend lesser time and do more accurate analysis okay so i've done many many uh, example comparison particularly for underground structures and even for on the ground structures just with a member tension command member cable command okay you just uh, drop me an email i can send you the examples and you can compare it for yourself i know some of you it may be shocking to see that i am saying uh, load combination gives wrong results for many structures uh, the honest truth is that yes yes because uh, load combination doesn't combine the results and it's misleading isn't it load combination combines the results of primary load cases when we use physical modeler in modeling structures including slabs does the beam be divided into several members when exporting to analytical model uh, yes when we use the physical modeler in modeling structures including slabs the beam will be divided automatically okay into several members when exporting to analytical model yeah that is the purpose of physical modeler when one button click the whole model is getting meshed please watch a, uh, watch my previous webinar last month uh, if you do not have the link so please drop me an email i can send you the link I explain the physical model, the benefits of physical model. Yes, please. Uh, certificates are available. Please. Uh, do it. At the bottom of your screen, you can see the certificate option. Okay. Can you provide detailed seminar for tower design? Definitely, we'll come up with a tower design example. But um, I, I would prefer uh, that uh, a seminar be on either MS Tower or uh, uh, Open Tower. we already have many youtube videos available in our uh, bentley structural youtube channel please watch that open tower uh, videos okay i i discourage using stat pro for tower design because the modification of the tower and, and the live antennas and appurtenances are not there in stat pro so being a general purpose program uh, stat pro uh, takes more time in doing the tower design whereas using open tower or ms tower depending on the core requirements you can choose one of this is much much more easier program to use for tower design i hope uh, by me by saying tower i hope you mean uh, a, a transmission tower or a communication tower isn't it okay so then, then ms tower or open tower is the right product for you stat pro takes more time in modeling and reporting okay some of the questions are reporting <clears throat> okay um, uh, some of the questions are repeating sorry the reference load will not in finding results for specific the reference loads provided will not help in finding results for specific load cases i don't agree with that if you want to find results for a specific load case you can still do that in reference load case for example let's say if you are interested in uh, getting the results of a wind load case i model the wind load case as a reference case and if i'm interested in extracting the results of the specific wind load case i can put that in a primary load case and call only the wind load case with a factor of 1 okay and then you get the results of the wind load okay uh, do you have example that includes wind tunnel analysis wind tunnel analysis uh, i'm sorry i do not have uh, examples on that 
do the load group results differ from repeat load only because repeat load consider non real load cases if i remove the non real load cases from the envelope will it give me the same results yes i agree with you you are correct but you need to take care of that extra effort you need to put in that extra effort of removing the unreal load cases from your uh, envelope isn't it so that extra effort is not needed when you use load groups isn't it okay uh, so load groups are reference load the best option for creating load, load cases yes correct yeah can we just use reference load for all type of structures yes uh, why not yeah but uh, when you want to apply seismic loads then you cannot apply the uh, seismic load in reference loads uh, you cannot enjoy the definition automatic generation of wind load and uh, seismic loads okay so uh, you need to combine the usage of reference loads plus the primary load cases okay but try to avoid the uh, usage of load combinations except you are doing a simple structure okay okay see me Any of you thinking for the webinar? Okay, uh, this is a long question uh, from uh, BMT Muthu Murugappan. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I would like to confirm that whenever we use reference load, we can just use the primary load case to create the combination that is with factor. However, how to combine seismic load defined as spectrum? Ah, very good. This this what I already explained to you. When you want to combine and real load cases, we still have to use load combinations. You are correct. yes okay so uh, there are some limitations in uh, combining the dynamic load cases with static load cases uh, using repeat load or reference load so for that we have to still go back to the old uh, uh, scenario using load combinations i'm sorry the audio breaking uh, i don't know the reason uh, okay so you'll be getting a email of the recording so please watch the uh, recording we are using load list command during analysis without any primary load cases uh yes uh, load list command helps you to filter the uh, load combinations only am i correct yeah but still you see the way you combine the loads uh, is more accurate when you use the load group load group command uh, load group plus primary load case command okay so understand the pitfall of load combinations with the special cases prefer to use load combinations on uh, if still prefer to use uh, load combination on complex structures there a way to kind of convert the output with the same output of using reference load case uh, in that case uh, you have to manually do uh, do model your primary load case uh, to resemble the real load cases with the factors of safety that you want to consider okay so which makes our uh, work more uh, time consuming isn't it that's why load groups why don't you consider using load load groups that simplifies your model uh, it's not a additional feature i don't have to pay anything it's just a feature that you already have okay it's just the practice you have to change a little bit okay modeling the loads as load groups instead of uh, primary load cases okay is it okay to combine both the call the wind as auto generate then use repeat loads yes yes you can do that because the the wind loads you cannot you generate in the reference load case so you have to use that in primary load case and then combine them in the repeat loads uh, yeah that, that that's okay no problem but make sure um, you understand the uh, the limitations uh, as explained in my presentation okay uh, as far as possible try to use load groups but then in some cases uh, you can't use load groups for that uh, you have to use uh, repeat load and even in some cases even repeat load doesn't help so for that you have to still use load combinations like response vector load case okay uh okay start foundation training also is available in our uh, land server uh, my email address is madan.elmalai@bentley.com i'll uh, type in this answer and try to push to everyone okay filling madan.elmalai@bentley.com is sent to all okay yes so i hope all of you got my email address oh, sorry 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 i i typed it wrong at e n b e n t i thought i covered that in the b n b l e y sorry 
ikke corrected it. It's a spelling mistake for that. Hmm. Can we get this certificate for recorded video? You can get the certificate for attendance. You can also get the recorded video. Okay, the certificate you can download it at the bottom of your screen. You can see a certificate uh, icon, and uh, recording video will get a link in your. Uh, you'll get an email shortly. Okay, so some of you are given your email. I'll try to send you the models. Okay, one by one. Okay, so offshore engineer. Uh, question from PT Mac uh, iMac. Uh, I'm offshore engineer. Can we use this method to analyze offshore structure with the environment load like wind, seismic, and wave? Okay, for wave load, uh, we do not have option in Stat Pro. We used to have a, a module called Stat, which we discontinued recently. So I my my suggestion is to use SACS for offshore structure. Okay. Because uh, the wave load generation is available in SACS, whereas in Stat Pro, we have to do that in uh, manually. Okay. Whereas if you do only top side, then you can use Stat Pro also for uh, uh, wind and seismic, but not for wave. Okay. Even for transportation, uh, we used to use the Stat Offshore module, which is discontinued. So for transportation loading, you have to use SACS now. Okay, many of you have given your email address. I'll send you the models later, one by one. I know which email to send to when requesting the models input. You can either send to me by email or you can just type in your email address here. All your uh, uh, email addresses and questions are captured here and recorded. So please drop in your email address in this question and answer below. So from there, I can capture your email address. From there, I can also capture your interest in getting the models. Okay. If you always added the dead load to other real load during the load combo, that's that will be doubled. No, no, each load cases uh, will have a different combination, so load, dead load will not be doubled. Where can we send for us to have a sample reference for the load groups? Just drop in your uh, interest here. Uh, drop in your idea uh, that you need the model so then I, I can send it to you okay. or you can send it to my email also no problem okay so um, I see that many of you have requested for the models uh, with the email address here uh, I'll send it to you one by one stat blank code the load combination when the model is non-linear spring etc except for simple structures unfortunately we can't do that for now because as i said there are some limitations still existing for example when you consider the uh, dynamic analysis response spectra we can't use a reference load uh, to model it we still need to use primary load cases and when we want to combine the dynamic results with uh, static results we still need to use the old load combination command okay so we can't blank out uh, load combination command. Uh, that, that defeats the purpose of uh, a general purpose program. Yes, uh, another question from Charles Worley. Uh, saw some syntax of seismic load combination when they're combining repeat load results for vertical loadings and using load combinations to combine the primary load case of response spectra and repeat load results of uh, vertical loading. Yes, it's acceptable. So when we have a response load, uh, spectrum load case, that we have no option. We still have to use the load combination command to combine the dynamic and static results. Okay. Do you have a webinar in applying the reference load to structures? So we, we have reference to follow. Uh, in applying reference load, okay. Do you have a webinar? This is the webinar for reference load to structure. So the recording will be available. Okay, the email address I already pushed to all of you. Hope all of you got the email address. Okay. Repeat load is not recommended. McConnell Dowell hung again. Repeat load is not recommendable as it requires more processing power and time, but the result is same with the load group. Am I correct to conclude it in this way? Uh, uh, partly yes, because repeat load require more processing power because uh, it uh, needs to analyze the unrealistic load cases also before we use the uh, load cases in repeat load. So that way, it takes more time, more processing power than the load group command. 
because load group command, we have an option to neglect the unreal load cases and model only real load cases in primary load case to analyze it. So obviously, load group will be more efficient and uh, more uh, uh, accurate as well as uh, less uh, consuming. Yes, you are correct, um, Hung. In the future edition of shared will load combination be removed for force the user to use load group? No, we will never remove the load combination command. For simple structures, load combination command can be still used. And uh, to combine the dynamic with static results, we still have to use the load combination command. Do you have any webinar for total check for open and SHS sections? Uh, we uh, we can do that in our uh, subsequent uh, sessions, but it's very easy. Uh, torsion checks are available, uh, well implemented in the code. So if you follow the, by default, it checks for torsion design. And you use the tor command, the tor design parameter to set uh, the torsion check to uh, various uh, intensities. Okay, By default, you just do a simple torsion check zero code for both, uh, for any type of sections, open or closed sections. But if you follow uh, any other code, uh, let let me know. I can check uh, the torsion check is available for uh, that particular code. Okay. But Euro code, uh, it is available. British code is not available. Uh, American code is already available. Can I use group load to combine load generation, moving load to other load? Group load to combine load generation, moving load to other load. So when you use moving load command in StatPro, that has to be generated using primary load case only. You, can, you cannot generate load, moving load generation in repeat load yet. So that is the limitation, yes. Question and answer recording will also be shared. Yes, I'm still recording this question and session. It will be shared also, included in my presentation. OK, please send back the YouTube channel to the subscribe times. OK. Well, up to what extent we can use FEM analysis instead? Uh, FEM analysis instead, yes, StatPro is equipped with plate elements, uh, both triangular and quadrilateral elements. It's a, it's a flat shell element. In addition to that, it also has a solid element, four noded to uh, eight noded uh, brick element. Um, up to what extent you can use FEM analysis in StatPro? You can use it. Uh, for FEM analysis in StatPro, I don't know what you mean by up to what extent. Uh, StatPro, as you know, it doesn't handle uh, material nonlinearity, so you can use it uh, until that limit, okay? only for geometric nonlinearity. Otherwise, the uh, modeling the plate elements is easy, much, much easier in StatPro, but modeling solid element is not that easy in StatPro. Okay? So you should understand the limitations and uh, benefits of using for finite element analysis. As far as they're using it mainly for structural analysis, uh, plate elements is more than enough. So combining beam elements and plate elements, uh, StatPro is a good solution for finite element analysis. Reference loads with seismic parameters can be combined with these load groups. Uh, as I mentioned before, reference loads for seismic analysis is useful only for mass modeling. You have to still create your seismic load as primary load cases. Many of you say thanks to me. Uh, thank you for all for joining the seminar. Can you give me an email? I given to you already. Thank you for the presentation. Can I, can I start watching? Uh, you can watch the recording. Uh, hello, if you want to check the combination of dead load, live load, and seismic load from response vector, should you define the reference primary load case combination of the dead and live load first, and then add this uh, first, and then add this reference primary load case to load combination to further add in results from response spectra. Correct. So you, you can, for static load cases, uh, uh, you can uh, use the reference load case, uh, and then um, you can model the response spectral load case in a primary load case. And finally, to combine that, uh, you can combine uh, using a primary load case, uh, sorry, a load combination with the uh, with the uh, dynamic and uh, static load cases. So the reference load case uh, where you model the static load case such as dead, live, uh, you can uh, call them in, in, a, in a static uh, primary load case uh, where you do call this reference load case with a proper factory of, uh, factor of safety. And then model the another primary load case. We finally combine them using the load combination command with the, with the already combined primary load case for static load case and then the already analyzed uh, response spectra. So you have to combine them using the load combination only. Okay. Well, we are using the different factors for deflection and strength design load combination. But how in load groups? As I said, load groups doesn't use factors. They are just uh, reference load. 
groups, they are not getting analyzed. Call them only in the primary load case. So when you create primary load case, you call the load groups, and at the time you give whatever factor you want. You may generate a different factors, a different set of primary load case for serviceability check, and another set of uh, primary load case for strength design, which is using different uh, combination factors. Okay, so please use the factors when you call the primary when you call the reference load case in your primary load cases. Okay, hope that is clear. Please watch my webinar once again. Okay, I need the file submission. Okay, I send it to you. Okay, it looks like many of you are interested on the questions. Still, some twenty more questions. Okay. Okay, most of you are sending your email address. I'd love to have the files and models are used. Definitely, I'll send it to you. Uh, many of you are giving the email address. Good, 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 good. So all the twenty questions are uh, reduced to ten now. What is the difference between Y and Y only spring support, uh, Benjamin from EEI Philippines? I already explained to you. The spring support for Y and Y only is uh, used in the Matt Foundation module of Stratpro. Y spring means it is supported in Y direction and MX and MZ are fixed. Whereas Y only means Y is fixed. Oh, sorry, Y is spring supported and all of them are released. Okay, so that is the difference between Y and Y only spring support. In the Matt Foundation, uh, in uh, Stat Pro, it is. Uh, is it advisable to use response spectra analysis on a cable roof structure? Cable roof structure. Uh, that is a good question. Uh, why not? Why not? Okay. See the problem. You are, but you have to be careful because the output of response spectra analysis is unsigned. Okay, so you don't know axial force out output coming in from a response spectra analysis is. Uh, uh, is causing compression or tension. Okay, so uh, it'll be a tricky situation. So uh, my previous experience in, uh, in applying a response spectra analysis on a structure with a tension member, which is similar to a cable member, is that only for response spectra, I chain the member as a truss member and make sure uh, the analysis doesn't produce too much compressive force. Okay, so it's a tricky situation. Uh, uh, my suggestion is um, uh, you better not do a response pattern analysis on a cable roof structure, rather do a static seismic analysis on a cable roof structure because of these limitations of the signs when you do the response pattern analysis. Okay. I hope I explained that clearly. Okay, so that comes to, brings us to the end of our question and session, which uh, surprisingly extended for one hour. Okay, so thanks for uh, joining us for this webinar. Please um, uh, do. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, surveys also, which follows this question and answer session. Uh, please attend this uh, uh, survey also, not just the polls, but also the survey. Um, I'll try to send you all the polls for whom you asked. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Finally. Okay. So if you still want to keep in touch with me, um, uh, I have provided my email address um, on the chat window, question answer session. Please do send me an email. Uh, I'm happy to answer your questions. Okay. For those of you who are requested for the models, uh, please uh, give me some, some time as uh, uh, models to all of you. I have your email address all here. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, catch up with you with the next month with a different topic. Please do suggest if, you, if any, of, any of you uh, are interested in specific topics, please drop me an email. I can then uh, um, see how much the response for that specific topic, and I can make a, a different topic for the next SIG session, special interest group session. Thank you all, uh, and um, a good day. Stay safe home. Okay, bye.